Welcome back to my channel, Bucket List Homestead. And today's video is going to be another copycat um, recipe. This one we're pretty excited about, especially me. We are going to try and copy toaster strudel. Toaster strudels? While making them somewhat healthier. <laughs> Let's face it, it's still a treat. So um, I actually have not bought to toaster strudel in years. It's been years since we've had them. Um, but I love them. <laughs> as a kid, I loved them. And as an adult, I'm going to admit, I love them. So this, I'm really excited to try. So the, re the ingredients for this are simple, easy, and it's going to be a fast recipe. The filling is two ingredients. Jam and cornstarch. That's all you need. And I'm using blueberry jam because the blueberry toaster strudel are always my favorite. And this is jam I made with Pomona's pectin this summer. Um, I'll link down below, I'll link here somewhere at the end of the video, whatever. Um, the video where I made it, Pomona's pectin, I'd heard about it over a year ago, but this was the first year I was able to use it. Um, I gave away all my other pectins. I'm never making jam any other way again. I only had to use, I think it was like a cup of sugar for all this blueberry jam I made. And my old recipe was like eight cups of sugar. So this is definitely going to be a healthier <laughs> toaster strudel. The other part that makes this easy, I'm using pre-bought, <laughs> pre-made, bought, um, puff pastry. You can make your own. Um, it's a lot of work <laughs> to make your own puff pastry. And quite frankly, with the cost of butter right now, it takes a lot of butter um, to make puff pastry. This was like $4. And I have two packages right here. And um, yeah, I doubt I could make it for $4. I know I couldn't because butter alone right now, if you don't get it off sale, is like $7, $8. So and it, you're going to use a whole pound of butter to make a thing of puff pastry. So make it, make it easier on yourself and just buy the puff pastry. So these have been sitting out for uh, a few hours becoming uh, room temperature. So I'm going to get my apron on and I'm going to meet you over at the stove. So first, I'm going to start with the filling so that gives it time to cool down while we're cutting out the squares for our toaster strudel. So I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want to use this whole jar. I guess it depends on how many. I'm going to use the whole jar. So I'm going to use a whole uh, jelly jar, half pint of my blueberry jam. and a tablespoon of cornstarch. So. Oven is heated to 400 degrees and I have a cookie sheet already with parchment. So we're just gonna basically melt this until we get to the consistency we want. So we're at the consistency I want and I just want to mention, I end up adding um, not quite another whole tablespoon, um, mm -hmm. three-fourths of a tablespoon maybe. Um, and then I put water till about here on my um, blueberry jam jar and um, mixed it all up so it was dissolved and added it to it because that one tablespoon of cornstarch was not enough to get the consistency I need. So there it is. Gosh, that's a gorgeous color. Okay, so we're just going to let this cool. And now we're, we're going to get to the... Um, puff pastry part. So I've left them on the paper it came with just to make clean up a little easier. This part is totally optional. You can use a pizza cutter or a knife or whatever and cut out the size of toaster strudel you want. Um, they're about the size of, they're a little smaller than a pop tart. I'm going to use this. Um, these are a set of, grab this other one, square cookie cutters. I actually got at our dollar store a couple years ago. I got them in a set of square and a set of circles, and um, these are going to be perfect size. They're still going to be a little smaller than the traditional um, toaster strudels, but that's okay. So, and I want—I don't want to waste any space. So, basically, these are going to be my bottom, and these will be my top. And I'm just going to cut them out, and we're going to get a lot <laughs> out of this recipe. My plan is, if they turn out, to freeze them, just like toaster strudel, and then you can um, pop them in the toaster to heat them up. So, and these ones I wouldn't mind 
um, my family having them for breakfast because they are much healthier than the traditional. I am going to make a powdered sugar glaze to put on them just because the toaster stool will have them. That will be optional too. You could just dust them with powdered sugar or you could um, do the icing like I'm going to do. So it's working out pretty good. Got about four. So I'm just going to keep cutting these out. You don't need to see that. That's like watching paint dry. And I'll bring you back when I'm ready to assemble them. So I got all my squares cut out. <clears throat> Excuse me. I forgot to mention beginning of the video. We're all getting over some yuck here in the house. So if I sound a little, actually I like, kind of like the way my voice is sounding today. <laughs> but if I sound a little different, that is why. Um, yeah, it's very throaty and <laughs> raspy. <laughs> anyway. I cut my squares all out. In the last row, I used a smaller, <laughs> my smaller square, just because the bigger one was not, it wasn't, it wasn't quite enough dough left there. And I have a big ball of dough here that I can roll out and make some more. So I'm excited. I hope these turn out as good as they, they are looking. So I also have a egg and maybe two tablespoons of now what I used is called 18% cream here in Canada table cream it's not half and half it's not whipping cream I think they call it table cream in the states too but I'm not 100% sure um, but that's what I used you can use whole milk you can use whipping cream you can use half and half just don't use um, like a low fat milk because you, you, you need it it's too thin and too watery to be your glue. That's gonna be our glue. So we're gonna start filling these squares. All right, so our mixture's ready and I'm just gonna put, I don't want to, I don't want to fill them too much because you don't want it to seep out, but you need to have enough in there. So probably maybe about a tablespoon on each square. And these are all the bottoms. So we can go ahead and put some on each one of them. I'm just going to keep going. And you can All right, so now we're going to take our glue and we're just going to go around the edges here. Try not to be too messy, but it wouldn't be me baking if it didn't get messy. I'm <laughs> lay the top over. Push it down. Squish, 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 squish. Perfect, those are going together. So I'm just gonna repeat this until they all have tops. Brush a little bit more of that um, egg milk mixture over the top. And then it's really important that you chill puff pastry no matter what you're using it for before you bake it. Um, Cause all that butter it, from going cold to hot like that, it helps make more flakes, makes it flakier. So these won't fit in our refrigerator, these bigger cookie sheets. Um, so yeah, I forgot to mention I had to get a second cookie sheet because this ended up making so many. Um, I'm going to put them in our deep freezers for about 10 minutes to get them nice and cold and then into a 400 degree oven. We'll try for 10 minutes. I'm thinking it's going to take up to 15, but it's better to start small and work your way up. So they're in the freezer chilling and I'm going to make the glaze because I want it to sit a little bit uh, while everything cooks and cools and everything. This is so easy. This is probably the easiest recipe I've ever made. Um, so I have a sifter here, powdered sugar, and some more of that table cream. And I like to sift my powdered sugar um, just because it, it's clumpy and I find it um, incorporates better. Is that the word I'm looking for, maybe? Um, if it's sifted. So I'm just going to sift. So I got about a quarter cup here. I think that's plenty for what I'm going to need. I 
And this is actually organic um, powdered sugar made from organic cane sugar. So I'm trying my best to make this as healthy as I can. <laughs> so I'm just going to add a teaspoon roughly at a time. I want it fairly thick. that you see that's the consistency that I want actually I want it even a little thicker than that which it probably will thicken up when it sits so I'm going to do another quarter cup and uh, get this mixed up and then we'll set it aside and wait for the um, toaster strudels to cool down completely before we ice them so they'll be going in the oven in about 10 minutes first batch something happened in my top my top oven got turned off so these were in the bottom oven and 10 minutes was perfect they turned out just as flaky as could be and no seepage so that's why that's important you have that um, glue but they smell great just gonna see if they're not too hot and they're brown on the bottom so these are gonna have to cool uh, completely before we do anything with the glaze so that will be a little while so we'll, we're gonna go have supper it's pizza night so we're gonna make our pizza, have supper, and by then hopefully at least this batch will be cool enough that we can glaze them and wrap up this video. So we'll see you after supper. They're all cooled down. I already started um, putting some glaze on a few of them. I'm just putting glaze on a few because the rest I do plan to freeze. Um, I'm actually gonna look on Amazon and see if I can find those packets that, um, even if they're reusable, which is fine, um, that I could squeeze, like, you know, how the toaster strudel comes with those little packets of icing and you cut off the top and you can, you know, frost your, your toaster strudel, squeeze out the frosting. Because that would be great. Um, so I don't have to stop. And, I mean, it doesn't take long to make up frosting, but that would be kind of cool to have that as part of it. So I'm going to show you how they turned out. So here they are. Like I said, I just have a few of them glazed. Um, they are puffier because, obviously, they're puff pastry. And now that I think about it, I bet you Toaster Strudel puts something on top of them so they don't puff up so much when they cook. I'll try that next time so I can keep them flat and dense like they are. But the real test is trying them. So I'm going to try one of the small ones and we're going to see how it goes. Mmm. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness. They do taste like toaster strudel. Wow, that's like being 13 again. <laughs> oh my goodness, that is good. And they're not, this adds sweetness too, so I'm glad I use jam that doesn't take a lot of sugar. These are delicious. Oh my goodness. I'll be making more of these and definitely freezing them. So we have a few for the week here and the rest are gonna go in the freezer. That'll be a good test too to see how they freeze. And then I'm thinking, I think they're too small for the toaster. And I'm worried they'll go soggy in the microwave. So we'll have to try a couple of different things. Maybe the to uh, air fryer might be how we heat them up when they come out of the freezer. So there we go, folks. Coffee cat toaster strudel. Oh, my goodness. These are so good. I'm going to go have a cup of tea and finish this um, and enjoy it. Uh, my next video for coffee cat, I'm thinking Nutella. Another thing we love that we don't buy, um, usually I get some at Christmas time because I have a couple recipes that call for it, but the ingredients aren't the greatest and I'd like to make my own so it's better ingredients. So I kind of thinking of that and then I got a couple other ideas I'm not going to tell you about right now. So there we go. Till then folks, take care. God bless. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to others. And we'll see you all soon.